In this lecture segment, we'll wrap up the pointer basics by going over a number of ways to mess up with pointers. This may be the most important lecture of the module, so be sure to focus in. C pointers are a legendary source of mysterious bugs. Right at the top of the list is the use of an uninitialized pointer. As mentioned in the prior lecture segments, pointers, like any other variable, have garbage data in them when declared. This means they contain a random address. They, they point to a random location in memory. So you can visualize a just declared pointer, like our iPointer3 that has had no initialization in the program. You can visualize it as having a sort of loose cannon arrow that points uh, any place it pleases in memory. Now, you'll save literally days of debugging time with C pointers if you heed the following. Upon declaration, a C pointer is worse than useless. It's a bomb waiting to explode at a touch. Do not dereference it until you have done something explicit to initialize it, such as assigning an address into it or, or copying it from another pointer. Any experienced C programmer instinctively cringes at code like this, declaring P and then assigning 42 into it on the very next line. This code says, in effect, put a 42 anywhere you'd like to in memory. Danger is the spice of life. Surprise me. This will do unpredictable damage to some data, but may not have any obvious effect until hundreds of lines later, or if you're really unlucky, it won't show any obvious effect at all. If P's random target, for instance, happens to be memory that you don't care about. We've... Uh, gone over this in prior lectures, but it's worth reiterating. The worst C bugs are those that have no ill effect. If it's a bug, but it works anyway, you're not lucky, you're unlucky. This includes using uninitialized variables of any sort. You might get by with the code uh, that we showed over here, but uh, if you do, it's just whitewashing the problem. Sooner or later, as the code is modified or moved to other computers, possibly decades later, the uninitialized address will change to some other value, or important data will be shifted to the pointer's random target over here, and uh, the bug will rise from its hiding place and blow up your program. Now, if you are lucky, you'll get an immediate fault from an uninitialized pointer from dereferencing one, and at least on Unix, it'll be one of two specific faults. The first is the ever-popular segmentation fault, often abbreviated to segfault. We've talked about this also in prior lectures, but here's a quick reminder. Your program coexists with other programs also running in the computer's memory. It's bad enough if you trash up your own memory area, but letting programs randomly trash each other's memory areas is a recipe for complete chaos. Such chaos used to reign in older operating systems. We're talking really old, like Windows 3.1 or Win95. But any modern operating system restrains each program to its own area, or segment, of memory. This is a hardware-enforced restriction, done by a memory management unit, or MMU, a part of the CPU that catches any attempt by a program to access memory not its own, and stops the program with a segmentation fault if it does attempt such access. A seg fault may be caused by dereferencing an uninitialized pointer, going past the end of an array, etc. Now, while we're at it, the MMU also arranges the fiction that every program's memory area starts with address zero. Your program's memory area generally starts at some non-zero address, say address a million, for example. But the MMU hardware automatically adds one million to any address your program requests so that what you think of as address 0 automatically maps to 1 million, your address 1 maps to a million and 1, etc. You're none the wiser. You think you're addressing from 0, but the truth is you're addressing from a million, courtesy of the MMU. The MMU is smart enough to keep track of where each running program's memory is and do the right thing for each program. And more fully, the operating system configures tables in the MMU to do this, and this is one of the bigger jobs of the OS. Now, the second type of fault is something we haven't discussed, a bus error. This has nothing to do with public transportation. The bus refers to the band of leads on the motherboard that communicates an address from the CPU to the memory. 
In almost all memory hardware, bytes are not fetched one at a time. More typically, you must fetch them four at a time, or, or even eight at a time. This makes fetching of multibyte variables, such as a four-byte int or, or an eight-byte double, much faster. But because the memory is organized by these byte groups, the byte groups have to start at addresses divisible by four, or possibly eight. We can fetch a four-byte group that starts at address zero, four, or eight, etc., but not one that starts at address 1, 2, 3, 5, etc. Any valid pointer to an int will hold an address divisible by 4 because any int variable in the program starts at such an address. But if the pointer is uninitialized or otherwise trashed up, then it may contain any random address, and the odds are 75% that it won't be divisible by 4. Dereferencing such a pointer results in trying to fetch a 4-byte group of bytes from an invalid starting address, which the memory bus cannot handle, and the result is a bus error. A bad pointer is just about the only way you can make this happen, so if you get a bus error, examine your pointer code carefully. The next common pointer error is uh, much simpler. You cannot assign a pointer of one type to one of another type. Line 37 of the sample program, for instance, tries to copy an int pointer into a uh, float pointer. The compiler won't allow this, since it would let you treat what is actually an int, my pointer one's target, as though it were a float. And you know from prior lectures that the two have completely different bit formats. There are actually ways around this rule using a pointer cast. Uh, we'll get to those later. Line 38 of our sample code attempts to take the address of the value 10. Now, this 10 is an integer, but it's just a constant not a location in memory. There's no place in memory that holds the 10, and thus no address to be taken. You can only take the address of something that would work on the left side of an assignment statement, such as a variable, or an array element, or a dereferenced pointer. Expressions, constants, function calls, by contrast, do not work on the left side of an assignment, because while they have a value, they do not have a location in memory associated with them. So in particular, assignments like these would work, i equals 42, a bracket 3 equals 42, star i pointer 1 equals 42. But assignments like these wouldn't. 10 equals 42, square root of 5.0 equals 42, a plus b equals 42. The concept is important enough that it has a term, l value. An l value is anything that could go on the left side of an assignment anything that signifies um, location in memory and not just a value. So you may only take the address of an L value. 